Okay, so today, hey, stop singing Jingle Bells. Um, <laughs> we're, I want to look at uh, limits that go to infinity. Now, limits can go to infinity in two different directions. We can have a limit uh, that goes to infinity uh, the positive way, so going towards the right. And we could also have a limit as um, x is going to negative infinity, so that's going off to the left. <coughs> um, positive infinity can also be written like this. You can put a plus sign right there. Um, but normally, if there's no uh, sign on there, you know that it's positive. Just like normal numbers. <clears throat> okay, we're going to look at uh, g of x right here. So g of x is given to us in a graph. And I love the graph ones because visually I think it's so much more simple to understand graphically. <clears throat> so let's look at it. As uh, x's are going that way, they're increasing, increasing. Um, our graph is getting closer and closer to what y value? It's getting closer and closer to 7. And so as x approaches infinity for the g of x function, we are going to get 7. Uh, now, as x approaches negative infinity, what's this graph doing? So now we're going this way. What's this graph approaching right here? Three. Yeah, it's approaching 3 right here. So um, they're pretty much uh, the asymptotes. So it's absent. I don't know if this is a word. Asymptotal limits. Asymptotal. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up, maybe. Now let's take a look at it um, algebraically. So here's a nasty looking dude. Um, now you can still use uh, the basic limit laws and there's one that's called a quotient law and all that means is this. You can rewrite this like, like so. You can say that this equals the limit as x approaches uh, positive and negative infinity um, of 20x squared minus 3x divided by the limit as x approaches uh, positive and negative infinity of this bottom guy, which is a lot bigger. So we have 3 times x to the fifth minus 4x to the second plus 5. Okay, so we could find the limit to the top and the limit to the bottom. Then we just have to divide those, and then we would get our answer. Now, some of you guys may notice that there's a positive and negative infinity right here. What that means is going, you're going to find the limit as you're going to the left and you're going to the right. In this case, um, it doesn't matter because they both approach the same limit. Okay, and we know that because um, of the powers and like if you were to plug stuff in. Here, let's just let's talk about this one some more and then we can uh, go into why they, they wrote that. Okay, so let's find the limit to the top one. To find the limit to the top one, you just got to think about these x's, x values. Okay, for these x values, as x is increasing, let's just think positively first. As x is increasing positively, this is going to be going just bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And then same thing with this one. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we're going to have these two numbers subtracting from each other. They're just, the result is just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that means that the top is infinity. That's the limit. Um, if you think about it uh, negatively, so if we think about negative x values when we plug it into these, we're not going to see a change because of what happens, um, we'll see, let's, let's think about this one. Yeah, this squared right here, it doesn't matter. So you plug in negative numbers, you're still going to get the same results. And I plug in negative numbers here, this number is still going to be smaller than whatever this is, right? So it's still going to approach infinity. So both directions is infinity. Let's look at this one. Um, going to positive infinity, well, this number is just going to get ginormous. This number is going to get ginormous, but it's always going to be a little less than that one. And that constant, nothing happens to him. So we're still going to be approaching infinity here uh, if you're approaching the positive side. Now, if we're approaching the negative side, check this out. Um, well, what, what happens here? Like, if they're negative numbers, we get a, yeah, we get a negative right here. Um, what's this going to happen, though? It's going to be positive. So we have a negative number. And then uh, we're going to subtract the big positive number from it, and then we're going to add 5 from it. So what would this be approaching right here? Negative. Yeah, negative infinity. But because uh, this is not a number, it's a concept, it just kind of swallows that negative up. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, so we have negative divided by, or I'm sorry, sorry, infinity divided by infinity. What does that mean? What's infinity? Yeah, it's indeterminate. Oh, we can have indeterminate with these? Yeah, we can. Okay, unfortunately... You guys um, might have already done this in your head. You cannot factor these and cross something out. 
Um, there's no like conjugate multiplying, nothing like that. So how are we gonna like change this so that we can um, we can get it or find our limits? This is how you would do it. You look at the the quotient and you look at the bottom uh, polynomial here, our our denominator, and whatever is the biggest degree, that's what you're gonna divide everything by. So we're gonna divide everything by x to the fifth, every term by x to the fifth. Okay, um, <clears throat> first I want to show it to you guys just by, by dividing, and then I'll show it to you guys another way. So we have 20x to the second power, and we're going to subtract 3x. And then for both of these, we're going to divide x to the fifth. Um, and then on the bottom, we're going to have 3x to the fifth minus 4x squared uh, plus 5. And then we're going to divide each of these terms by x to the fifth. Now, I'm writing extra stuff right here. So, like, after we do this, you'll realize, oh, I didn't have to write all that stuff. This is just to help you guys understand it. And so, after that, you would, you know, divide it out. So, on the bottom, you would get 3 minus, and then when I divide these, what do you guys do with the exponents? Do you guys remember? What do we do with these? You don't cross them out. Subtract. So, what's 2 minus 5? So, you get x to the negative 3. And then you have, um, oh, there's no x on this one. Okay, so what's that going to be? It's going to be a 0 minus negative 5. Okay, so this is going to be plus 5x times, or I'm sorry, x to, to negative 5. So is everybody with me so far, what I got? Okay, now let's look at this other guy right here. I subtract those x values, or those exponents. I'm going to get 20x raised to the negative three, third power minus 3 x raised to the negative fourth power. Now I'll pause for a minute. We, did, we just finished it. We could take the limit now as x approaches infinity to see what we get. But it's kind of weird to always do it like this. This is kind of different. Like how come we're allowed to do that? Well, I want to um, remind you guys of something. You guys remember that um, x to the negative 5 equals 1 over x to the fifth? So technically, if you multiply anything times this, you're dividing it by x to the fifth, right? Yeah. Right? So normally, we, would, we wouldn't, I mean, you can write it however you want, however you want to get the right answer, but normally we wouldn't divide it like this. We would uh, multiply the top and the bottom by x to the negative 5. x to the negative 5. I just didn't want to do that right off the bat because I wanted you guys to see, you know, the, the thought behind it is dividing. Mm -hmm. But if you did it like that, you're kind of doing the same thing. I mean, if I go this times this, you would multiply the x's together, and what would you do with the 2 and the negative 5? Add, Add them together. Okay, and then the, you would get negative 3. And the same thing right here, we have negative 3x times x to the negative 5, and so that x right there has a positive one for its exponent, so you go 1 plus negative 5, and you would get negative 4. So um, if you understand this, just go straight to this. Don't even write all this stuff. Just... Multiply everything by the the highest degree, but you want to multiply it by it, um, yeah, the negative of it, because you're you're technically really dividing. All right, so we manipulated it. We manipulated the top and the bottom so that we can actually take the limit. Okay, so <clears throat> now we can take the limit of this. So so I don't have to write it all out. We're going to take the limit as x approaches uh, positive and negative infinity. Uh, let's look at the top right here. When I plug uh, infinity into this, now I'm not actually plugging infinity in because it's not a number, but it's a concept. That as the numbers get closer and closer, or bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what are what's happening to these two, um, to that num to that number? Okay, let's see here. Uh, what's happening to this number right here? Well, that number is technically 20 over x to the third. And if your, your denominator, that x right there, was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, what is this number approaching? I mean, the, the, the denominator is getting ginormous. It's approaching zero, right? So when that happens, you just say um, that, that, that it's zero. So the limit of that one term is zero. The limit of this term is zero. Why? Because the x goes on the denominator, and it, if it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it's going to approach zero. Now think about this guy, same situation. 
that x is technically on the bottom, so it technically says negative 3 divided by x to the fourth. As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this number is getting closer and closer to 0, so we're actually going to go minus 0 right here. So we're going to get a 0 on the top. And on the bottom, we have this 3. What's the limit as x approaches infinity of 3? Oh, it's just 3, right? So nothing happens with that. Uh, what's the limit of this guy as x approaches infinity? Well, it's going to be kind of like these ones right here. This x is going to go on the bottom, and it's going to be this fraction where the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so it's actually approaching 0. So we're going to put minus 0 right there. And then uh, the last one, same thing. So we have m plus 0. So we have 0 divided by 3. Is this an indeterminate form? No. No, we actually get an answer. That's the limit. It, there, are, there are limits that do not exist, or you'd write D and E, like uh, as, it, as you approach infinity. So like if I had the limit, uh, that's a great limit sign, uh, if I had the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x, well, sine x goes up and down, it, it oscillates forever, right? So we're not going to find a limit there. It just goes up and down, up and down, uh, up and down. So this one you would say does not exist. There's no way to manipulate it to find a limit. It just actually just doesn't make sense.